Hi, Zeke. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, we're, I, I always like talking with some of my uh, dear friends who are doing really incredible work. And you and I are connected in um, educational mission. And so this is especially fun for me to think not only about science, but also about education. So um, with that as a preamble, maybe you can introduce uh, mini PCR and what you're, what you're doing, what your role is there and what you're doing with it. Sure. So uh, I started Mini PCR Bio company together with a friend and um, scientist Sebastian Craves. We started this in 2003 um, with the goal of um, not three, 13. <laughs> okay. uh, no, I was in grad school in 2003. I'm sorry. So our goal was. Uh, no, to bring all the cool science actually that happened while I was in, in grad school and that happens every day in labs you know, across the world uh, to more places and you no know, more particularly the classroom. Uh, so there, uh, there are barriers to do uh, science in the classroom beyond you know, uh, the, the, the chaos of a school or not the chaos, but like you know, the hecticness of school. Now, one of them is equipment. Um, and another one is you know, having the, the resources, the reagents, um, the curriculum. Um, you know, uh, obviously, BioBuilder is a pioneer in that. Um, and you no, know, we started with, uh, yeah, with, with the, the idea of making things more accessible and easier to use uh, uh, and robust for the classroom. So as you may have guessed from the name of the company, uh, we started by trying to make a small PCR machine. Uh, you know, PCR machines amplify DNA and that's sort of the basic step in any you know, biotech, molecular biology experiment um, you're doing. Uh, so those machines are to be expensive. Uh, they're big, they're not designed for teaching really. It's, it's more for a scientist that goes, you know, knows what they're doing and you no know, starts a, a reaction. But you no, know, we wanted to bring that uh, more into what's going on when, when you're doing this. So. You know, we made uh, the machine transparent and we have software that helps you know, the student or the user see what's going on inside the machine. Um, so we started there and then obviously we realized, well, this is not the only thing that uh, makes it hard to teach uh, science so, um, or to do science in, in low research or remote places. Uh, so then we added a, an electrophoresis system, which you know, used view the results of your PCR. And no, again, similar idea. It's, it's uh, all compact, it's all in one, it's safe, and it's inexpensive. Um, so now our company tries to do that in general to make science more accessible. And we also have a lot of experiments that, that students can, can do in the classroom. It's so funny. I, I feel, I've often felt that uh, BioBuilder and Mini PCR are, are cousins, like close cousins, because we are motivated in so much of the same way. The idea of bringing authentic science, modern biotechnology into the hands of people and demystifying it. I think I have one of the earliest of the mini PCR machines that you ever made. It's, it's beautifully transparent. It's easy to use. Um, and you guys were just uh, a delight to work with as we started to integrate it into the teaching we do too. So um, I, I've often felt that we are um, quite connected in, in our mission and on our goals around, around mini, around education for, for science and, and that more people should have access to it, right? So, um, so yeah, that was one of the, as you say, very, very first. I remember going to your office. It's like, I was very nervous. <laughs> like, <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up. But are we yeah, even I, doing the right <laughs> thing trying to make this little machine? Uh, but you were so excited, actually, that helped a lot. Um, <laughs> Um, that's so that's so nice to hear I wasn't going to bring it up because I do remember you brought me a like a replacement like cord because because the cord yeah. I had wasn't working or something like that so um, I think that also pulls back the curtain a little bit on the um, 
uh, the leap of faith it takes to start an educational venture like this, right? You're, you're a PhD scientist, I'm a PhD scientist, and yet, you know, the idea of starting an organization to help bring science education into the world um, is a scary thing to start. <laughs> Yeah. out of our comfort zone let's say so uh yeah i remember you coming to my office with uh your with the the earliest um, among the earliest of prototypes so we'll buy it back for the museum from a museum <laughs> <laughs> for the museum yeah 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 so so maybe um can you can you brag a little bit about how far P mini pcr has come because you guys now are just uh, astonishingly impactful across the country and in, in terms of education. So, you know, he, here's the floor. Um, tell me, tell me what you're proud of from mini PCR. Yeah, well, uh, I'm, yeah, this, no, we, this started with just like the idea of making something very small. It wasn't even supposed to be a company in the very beginning. Um, but yeah, eight years later, it, you know, there are thousands, thousands of these machines. Um, and you know, I, I guess it's not only numbers. I think what I can brag about is we get emails from teachers that I, I think that's in on a weekly basis, I would say, just thanking us so much for you know giving them the opportunity to do what they want. And when you see that come in your inbox, I think I can I don't brag about it, but now since you ask internally, I brag about it. Mm -hmm. And I like that's very rewarding. Um, and I think people really appreciate what we do. You know, when we go to conferences, teachers also like are really excited. Um, so yes, we, we hear about, you know, middle school through college, uh, you know, stories about how this enabled not just classroom, but also field use, mm -hmm. um, sometimes by students, but many times by scientists uh, that need to go somewhere where they can run this off the grid. Um, that happens in the U.S., but that also typically happens far away. Mm -hmm. um, so Amazon is an example. You know, we had someone uh, studying biodiversity go there, collect samples, and then you know, amplify them and then put them to, to a sequencer and identify right where they were, you know, the species that were around the site. This is incredible. This point of use PCR machines is just yeah. awesome. And while we're talking about um, placing them far afield, you also put them up into space, if I'm uh, not mistaken. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we have actually a, a few machines in the International Space Station, and they made their way there actually uh, through a partnership with Boeing, the same company that makes the planes. They have an aerospace. Uh, you know, side of the company, uh, we met at an accelerator here in Boston called Mass Challenge, and you know, we're both excited about what we were doing, um, and they were trying to expand what they could do in space with microbiology. They didn't have a PCR machine, so we decided, okay, we're going to send one, and, you know, what are we actually going to do with it? So we thought together, why don't we uh, actually ask students. Um, so we put together this competition called Genes in Space. And each year uh, we ask students to, you know, think about questions that would advance space exploration. Um, and that can be solved with DNA analysis. So um, we, you know, we get entries and then we have a uh, bunch of mentors, uh, not to be grad students here in the local area, we get together, we review the applications, and we go through a series of steps and presentations. Um, and then eventually we select a winner. Um, we help uh, the winner prepare the experiment, and then we launch it to space. We just launched one uh, last month. Yeah. Uh, okay. So exciting. And what, what a change, what, what an impactful moment that is for a student to have an idea realized and not only realized here, but to think of it running up in, in space. That's just incredible. So, yeah, it is. It, it's also that's something way beyond our initial expectations. But once it happened, you know, 
this is real science. It's on par with what it's being done. Space Station, all these experiments end up published you know, in peer-reviewed journals. Mm -hmm. It's very, very exciting um, for everyone involved. You know, the yeah. mentors also love it. And, um, but you no, know, we also try, there's only one winner like in most competitions. Uh, no, but we, you know, we have this website, Jeans in Space. Dot .org. Uh, we try to put a ton of resources there. It's fun. You know, there are interviews with NASA scientists and you know, mentors. So uh, it's a nice resource. And Incredible. Over Incredible. Yeah. But how many years has it been going? I have forgotten now. It's five, I think, or six. Wow. Six. Yeah, it was actually wow. very early on that we started. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Um, I wanted to back up a little bit and ask you, cause you are, are a scientist as well as an entrepreneur um, cause you're running this incredible company. Um, so um, maybe I'll just back up and ask about your starting interests in science and the way that you got led into science. And then maybe from there go into entrepreneurship because um, you know, we, we have students who will watch this and, and you know, are yeah. maybe at that stage where you were when you were thinking of science as a career. Yeah. Well, I, I think I, I think I was about 13 when um, my dad, he worked at a pharmaceutical company and he had you no, know, they received these magazines and um, no, I, I tended to read these little things. And, and there was one little article about uh, genetically modified, I think cotton at the time. Mm -hmm. And I, when I heard that, like I thought about that, like that's so cool that you can actually make things better. And you no, know, tinker may not be the right way because we do things very um, conscientiously when, when you touch DNA. Um, but I thought, no, that is so powerful. Um, so then I, no, I, I, and I was interested in biology in general. So when I finished high school, I went into no, undergrad in Argentina, that's where I'm from. So I studied there for about four or five years, um, biology, like a lot of biology. And then I, I, I really wanted to do the, do the research. You know, that's, I think that, that's what the exciting part is. And it was very hard to do it in Argentina. So I transferred to the US and I finished undergrad uh, where I spent most of my time in the lab, not in classes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where, yeah. where, where was your undergraduate yeah. uh, lab? <laughs> it was at Stanford, um, and it was uh, a lab that did research uh, in, you know, it's in the dermatology department. So we did epithelial research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you know, I, and you no, know, I guess my dream was to go into lab and then you know, have a lab of my own, ideally, and you no. Know, be be a scientist all my life i think once you're once you have your phd you're a scientist uh, mm -hmm. for life yeah. um, but um yeah so then i came to boston i mean cambridge i went to mit for for grad school i studied um genetics in in a tiny worm called c elegance um and at the time there was this very exciting new molecule called microRNA. It's a, a tiny, tiny pieces of RNA um, that do all sorts of cool stuff. And they were just essentially discovered uh, at that time. The class was discovered at the time that, that there were many and that there were in humans. So I, I was very excited about that. And I spent longer than I should have uh, in the lab, you know, studying this and I, you know, Fortunately, my, my PI, my boss, he, he was very flexible. He didn't want, like he didn't force you to stay or he didn't force you to leave. So it's up, it was up to me to decide when, you know, enough was enough. And uh, that took about eight or nine years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's probably a surprise to students to imagine to be like motoring your own boat through school and that you can decide to stay or decide to leave, you know, given certain constraints about how far you've gotten on a project, right? You can continue there or you can decide to move on to the next step and that it's in your control, right? It's not like you go ninth grade, 10th grade, 
11th grade, 12th, right? You, you can choose when you're in graduate school and control a little bit about, you know, your career as a graduate student, um, partially because you're, you're on a fellowship or your, your, your salary is covered, right? So it's not that you're paying tuition every year. Yeah, no, that, that's fundamental. No, when you go into grad school, you are not only paid for tuition, but you get a stipend, which is enough uh, usually to live fine. Now, I, I, I lived okay yeah. as a student. No, uh, I didn't have kids to you know, take care of. But it, no, so it, it's a very fun time uh, because you're really doing absolutely what you love. And the lab is open 24 seven. You can go whenever you please at night. You no, know, different people have different, um, you know, do different ways. And uh, yes, it's it's very flexible. Like you can decide for years, you know, maybe I take the next step and go to you know, buy a biotech company or I go to a consulting company. There are many things you can do after grad school. Yes. Um, and you you chose a very difficult route, which was entrepreneurship. So, so your transition from from the bench into running a yeah. company, what was that like? I, I don't know that I chose it. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I told you, I always wanted to be, you know, like a scientist and have a lab. By the end of grad school, I said, well, maybe that's not for me. I, um, so I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So what I did is I, I took a year off. Um, I went on a long trip with my family thinking when I come back, I'm going to know what I want to do. <laughs> but that didn't work. Uh, so I was still debating, um, you know, what do I like to do in life? And um, I, I went to work with some friends that had an engineer, a small engineering firm, and they did stuff completely different. Um, all sorts of random cool projects uh so they welcomed me there and uh, i worked with a couple of people you know trying to develop this small pcr machine they actually had already thought about it there was a biologist there so i spent like a year um mostly it was um like an internship i would say uh for me um to try to see if i liked engineering and building things and, and i did and after a year, I had a prototype, not didn't look very different from the one you have, Natalie. Um, but then I wasn't quite sure what to do with it. And that's when I, I met with, uh, with Sebastian. Actually, we were friends. We met um, in college in Argentina. Um, and we just happened to cross paths again. He had actually left grad school a lot earlier than I had so he had gone into consulting for quite a few years and he was having that those thoughts again like I consulting I've had enough um no why do I do so we got together and we you know talked about it and you know we had this machine it's like well let's see if there's interest in this um and we actually went to a professional development uh, session at MIT there were lots of you know high school teachers they gave us two minutes to talk about what we were doing and they were really excited. So that's sort of how we got into it. You no, know, none of us has a business background or, I mean, that's how entrepreneurship started for us. Like we have a small machine that see, you know, people like it. You now what comes next? Yeah. Um, it's great. I mean, the impact that you've had is so tremendous. Right. And, and it, uh, it started with a good idea and some smart, small steps in the right direction. Um, Cause I, I think that sometimes people think they need to have the whole vision laid out, like their whole business plan and their whole revenue model. And, and I think with, especially startups, it's the sort of a, you know, keep going in the right direction and then you'll get to a good place, right? Certainly seems that way with you. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, we had no business plan, no, really no clue what was, like, we didn't know if we were going to be doing that for a week, a month, a year or more. Um, no, it was like, well, let, let's try it. And it actually did take a while to get started. Now, especially with this, where you have to manufacture something, 
So if you think about all that is involved there, it's like buying the right parts, you know, they're custom, someone has to build them. You know, it was us in the beginning, even though we didn't know how to solder and things like that. So um, we were building this stuff as we wanted. Um, and I think we both shared the passion for science. Now we still, I think, see this as a science experiment. As, you know, we're doing science, uh, not just building machines. Um, so that kept us going, and, and it took a couple of years. Really, uh, it was just the two of us for over three years, um, and then you know, as things started picking up. Uh, we started you know, making, growing the team. Yeah. Yeah, and finding, uh, bringing good people in at the right time because yeah. uh, there's only 24 hours in the day, and there, if there's only one or two of you, you know, you're limited in how you can scale. So finding that right moment to uh, to just expand what you do, I think that's a hard part about being an entrepreneur and knowing all that. So I'm so glad. I mean, it's worked out great. It's worked out. I don't know. I, there's probably not a right or wrong way. This is how it worked. And no, we're, we're very excited every day to come to work. And, you know, we have our team, our, we have engineers, and then we have you know, teachers and scientists as part of the team. Um, so it's a really great place to be. And we have ideas, you know, sessions where we just, you know, think about what's next. Uh, um, so, well, I, I mean, it's inspirational and, and I hope that anybody, you know, who looks at the work that you've done and thinks about, you know, possibly starting a company can see, um, you know, that it's not an easy path. It's not a clear path, um, but it's, you know, a doable one. It, there are successes like yours and uh, yeah, I hope they'll take inspiration from uh, pursuing something you think is important and something you uh, are excited to do uh, and making it happen. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to talk to anyone. Uh, Natalie, you can share the information afterwards. Um, but yes, it's, um, I think being, being a scientist is, is you know, to me, it's one of the best decisions I could have made, not just about doing experiments, but about you know, how you think about things, how you approach problems. Um, I think you no, know, that helped with the company to do things very rationally. Yes. Um, and it's almost everything, as I said before, everything is an experiment. Yes. And you know, after doing grad school, you know that many of them fail. Um, yes. that, that's fine. Yeah. If they keep pursuing the ones that work. Right. I, I think that's, uh, that is exactly right. And what, what a good note to, uh, to close the conversation on. I think uh, it's really an inspiration. And um, obviously, you guys will continue to do great, great things and excited to have BioBuilder and MiniPCR, you know, collaborating where we can.